Hello everyone, welcome to ToffeeTube. My name is Toffee and today on ToffeeTube we're going to be discussing the Beta Wars 2022 Styles Review. Beta Wars are generally held for the purpose of celebrating African Americans in music, acting, sports and other fields of entertainment. This year's event has been aired live from the Microsoft Theater in Los Angeles and it's so exciting to see what did stars bring for us this time. As always, many of the looks were stunning and in some cases, some of them missed the mark. So let's have a look at the styles and see what's going on here. Please stay with me and watch the video till the end. Make sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and click the notification bell so you don't miss out on future uploads. Let's start with this dramatic look that Janelle Monet showed up with. The black ensemble from Roberto Cavalli includes a leather harness grabbing the strapless crop top matched with a see-through skirt. Although she's not tall, this long skirt and the whole outfit go on her without making any questions. She actually brought a BDSM kind of style to the red carpet. There are at least three different kinds of fabric used in this ensemble, but still the combination has been observed right. The leather straps have been symmetrically placed and the flower brooch is a proper item to be located there to make a spotless finishing to the straps. Actually, it has been a good complementary to the straps and a good contrast to the whole idea of this BDSM ensemble at the same time. The metallic buttons and buckles are also a spice of item here. You know the skirt could be easily attached to the bodice or separately sewn and worn from the waistline without any trouble. But obviously the buckles have been used to accentuate the concept and resulted in a more interesting form of design. The idea of a see-through skirt also is a good decision. It kind of made it wilder, made it more savage. It is the outlaw. The actress Eva Marcel showed up at this event with this mini dress from the designer Yusef Al Jazmi. I'm personally not a big fan of mini dresses on red carpets, but regardless of this taste, let's have a look at this outfit. The most iconic item that made this look kinda different from others is that the only thing used for resulting in a show-stopping dress was the pearls. Pearls in different sizes and shapes in a definite order and design have been placed next to each other and have created the mini dress we're seeing now. There are some straps and off-shoulder details winking at us, but still, those are as well being created by pearls. The straps flowing down from the waistline are also made of pearls. Except for using the pearls, an interesting point regarding this outfit is that the design has been symmetrically implemented and resulted in a good shape of a dress. The bodice and waistline part has a good harmony with each other and the middle part of the body is totally different pearl embellished. In this look, you can see any kind of lines from oblique, horizontal, vertical to curvy lines. But with all this, they totally well matched together and created an eye-catching adjustment and harmony. Cynthia Arrivo attended the Beta Wars with a two-piece outfit from Louis Vuitton. This one was the most colorful dress among the rest. First, let's talk about the design part of the look. The bodice is actually been implemented to result in a square shape from the front and back that when you look at it, it seems that there is just a hole at the middle to put your head in it to wear. While if you look at it from both sides of the torso, you see that it has been performed in a uniform way of design and stitching. This has been matched with the Elon skirt. Although it ended up showing an asymmetrical way of design, it's eye-catching. There are these leather straps crossing each other at the bodies that made a good harmony with the leather belt. I like that the belt is long enough to flow down there. The neckline is also far different from what we usually expect. There is this cowl scarf kind of neckline, which I'm thinking if it was a little bigger, it could actually play the role of a hood to put it on her head all the way up. There are also these straps and fabrics attaching to the skirt, which created a dazzling harmony with the neckline. Also, the pockets are interesting. They're oversized, and overall everything together made a good combination together. And from the pattern point of view, the color combination between orange, blue, yellow and their related saturations performed an energizing picture. If the blue is the representation of the sky and the orange is representing the urban kind of life, I think this painting has a lot to say. Victoria Monet is the next one who appeared at the event with this brown gown from the label Magda Boutroum. Do you remember I talked about the Combra corset dresses which is first created by Jean-Paul Gaultier and now are getting trendy again? If you don't remember, I put the MTV Awards review video in the card section and also the description part so you can refer to it easily. The most iconic part of this gown is these accentuated flowers placed at the corset part. 
they have created a con kind of look and can be considered an exaggerated icon. The sequins implemented on the dress made it eye-catching and reflect the light from every aspect. Everything about this gown has observed the balance and goes on her perfectly. The spaghetti straps are so cute and since she has a nice body, it really fits her. The cuts and stitches are done perfectly and the reflections make them to glow more. Overall, this gown was so chic and modest. Kiki Palmer is another one who showed up at this event with a dress from Connor Ives Fall Winter 2021 collection. I'm not sure if it was the best choice for her. The V plunging neckline and the high slit has been located at the exact same place which I guess was on VT. At least the slit could be a little higher in order to let her walk easier. Plus, it's not flattering and it seems she's not comfortable with this slit height. It seems she needs some space to pop those legs out, you know? The color combination and the different patterns used all together are not digestible. I personally have so many questions regarding the reasons for putting these patterns next to each other. Also, the fabric material seems thin and I wish it was a stiffer fabric selection there so the gown could have a better stand on her body. The only positive item regarding this look is the dramatic train which I believe if the fabric material was something stiffer, it could take it to another level. Let's have a look at Chloe Bailey's gown from the Lebanese designer Nicolas Gebron. Chloe has proved many times that black is the best choice for her. In this event, she wore this asymmetric black sequin dress which is stunning enough to gaze at. There is one side shoulder and a bare hand on the other side. The surly design at the bodies took this dress to another level and is the signature of this look. It has been designed without any orders and there is this nipple covering on both sides while one side is covered to the upper part and the other side has been expanded to the bottom of the bust. It kinda looks like the black fire flames as well. The bottom has a little sweeping concept which is just enough according to this look. I believe everything regarding this dress has been greatly observed in the balance. And the next one is Halle Bailey who as well showed up in a black gown from Mono. The more it passes, the more I believe that the black color and the minimal style are the signatures of the Mono brand. They have been successful in wearing their black gowns on many stores lately. About this black dress that Halle wore, I can say there are some questionable points to mention. The deep V plunging neckline resulted in notable skin showing at the bodies, which is digestible till now. Even the cutouts at the waist are digestible as well and are a good point of the design. But when you reach the bottom, you totally get the feeling that she's not comfortable in this gown. I don't know, maybe something is needed to resolve this. Like a slit, a vent, a pleat, anything that prevents this skirt to look like a wrapping gift. Another point that I really like to mention is that the more I look at this gown, the more I crave to pull this gown upwards. It feels like it's falling down. I don't think that this dress has so many differences from this JLo's look at the MTV Awards regardless of the shoulder straps. But I guess there are some factors that made the differences. One is the height and two is that JLo kinda used the leather vest on her outfit. I'm not talking about JLo now, let's return to Heli. This outfit I believe needed some changes in order to just fit her. The color literally goes on her and actually the design could be stunning on her, but some changes were needed. The rapper Coyle Ray attended the event with this whole denim look and this is daring. First, she wore a mini bralette to cover the stuff if you know what I mean. Then she wore a white oversized button down shirt which is up to her knees. She cuffed the shirt sleeves and wore a pair of grey knit sleeves under it as well. On top of all this, she wore this denim oversized blazer with a shorter length than the white shirt. And for the bottom part, she just wore a mini skirt and completed the whole look with this denim tie high boots. And for the accessories, she used a white choker. This look is kinda sloppy and digestible at the same time. She wore all this stuff layer by layer and still it's not hurting the eyes. It kinda brought the vibe of Y2K fashion and as I said, it's daring to show up in such a look on such a red carpet. You know, she kinda tried to keep it real according to her body type, her character, her occupation. Everything together maybe made a decision for her to wear this. Although I can't say I don't like it. It's just a matter of the taste. Ledmela is another one who showed up in a black dramatic look from the label Lina Barisha. I can see that these exaggerated fabric edge pieces at the upper part of the body have been trendy recently and she observed it as well. At the torso, there is a symmetric curve design oppositely implemented on the dress and the fabric attached at the waistline resulted in a bold silhouette which is kind of flattering. There is this high slit that made a good division between the one side of the skirt and the other that has a belowing the ground concept. 
I wish the non-frame part of the skirt was a little longer. The other thing I like that was a little different is the mesh fabric. I preferred if they selected a fabric same as her skin color tone, so you wouldn't be able to see this extra material. Cause its duty is to pull the fabrics together and present the outfit in its best way possible. Now with this way of fabric selection, we can totally see how her deep V plunging neckline has been stood there well. She completed her look with the leather opera gloves, which was a nice idea and took the whole style to another level. Jada Chiefs attended the Beta Wars with a look from the label TLZ La Femme, I guess. Please excuse me, but by looking at this dress, I remember Joy's handy. The bodice is not digestible at all, and you can't figure out the reason, the concept, and the inspiration that took you to this result. I wish there were some explanations to get us out of this confusion. Cause also there is this curvy stiff fabric attached to it from the side and I guess there have to be some statements. Somehow without a legal reason, it's just not digestible. But the skirt is kinda acceptable. The side high slit that made the opportunity to pop up the leg is eye catching and also wearing one single glove took it to another level. The accessories she completed her look with are notable as well and the train blowing the ground catches the eyes. Overall this wouldn't be a bad look if she was more mindful regarding her upper body part. With all this, even if there are some explanations, this doesn't go on her. She's lost in it and it's not acceptable. Last but not least is Lizzo who showed up with this navy blue gown from Gucci. I can say the finishings have been nicely done according to her body type. The fabric is sparkly enough to make her look flashier. I'm kinda 50-50 to this feather implementation on the sleeves and bottom hemlines cause I kinda imagine this look without any feathers and I end up assuming a proper chic gown. But already these feathers kinda made the gown complicated but still it's not hurting the eyes. I'm sure that I'm 50-50 to these feathers. The fabric that separately wrapped around her waistline made a good asymmetrical division between the bodice and the bottom and regardless of the feathers can be considered a notable signature of this design. From the geometric point of view, the deep plunging neckline and the thigh high slit made a good harmony with each other and also this black bra worn under the gown is kinda eye catching. You can't stop looking at it. It's interesting that even by wearing a chic formal gown, she still kept it real and presented her sexiness at its finest. Well, that's it for this year's Beta Wars. I'd be so glad to know what is your opinion. Did you like these outfits or hate it? Please let me know in the comments. Stay notified, this channel includes many reviews and analyses. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to see more content like this. So, see you soon.